Hey there and welcome back to another She-Hulk video. And today we're going to be talking about the latest episode to drop, episode 4, Is This Not Real Magic? Which follows up from last episode with even more glorious Wong moments, as he and Jennifer try to take down a rogue wizard using the courts, whilst Jennifer simultaneously struggles with her dating life. Which, you know, that's a lot to be getting on with. So with all that being said, let's jump into the review. So we start off the episode witnessing the awesome power of Donnie Blaze, sorcerer extraordinaire and master illusionist, performing for a pretty small and dead crowd at the Mystic Castle, and using cheap and obviously fake tricks like levitating with a wire, an obvious wire. But he does know that he's losing the audience, so he decides to try and up the ante and do a brand new trick. And so he calls out for a volunteer and comes face to face with Madison, a drunk party girl who for some reason has decided to come to a magic show with her girls. Not sure what the thought process for that decision was, but okay. Anyway, this girl feels like she stepped right off the set of Modern Family and is suitably awkward. And Donnie blazes tricks. Well, they continue to suck, and so he has to resort to doing some actual real magic. Some mystical shit. So it's a good thing that he's had some training at Camotage. Anyway, he opens up a portal to another realm, dimension, place, and... Yeah, it doesn't really look like a good place to go. There's literally two heads on a spike just through the portal. Did he open a portal to Middle Earth? Because it looks like orc heads on those spikes. Not a very friendly looking realm in my opinion. Anyway though, we then cut over to Camotage where Wong's busy with his super special secret Sorcerer Supreme duties. Streaming the Sopranos. God, I love Wong. Anyway, Madison falls through the portal into his room, holding a beating heart in her hands, asking where all the goblins have gone and if Wong is the Goblin King. And he, of course, knows that Donnie Blaze has sent her here, or at least sent her into another dimension where she's had to be saved from a lava pit by a talking goat in exchange for her blood. When he tries to return her home, she tells him that she doesn't remember where she lives and then spoils Key's Soprano's plot points and thus instigates the main storyline for the episode, Wong's blood feud against Donnie Blaze as a form of revenge for his negligence, which in turn ruined his enjoyment of The Sopranos. Oh, and to add insult to injury, she starts eating his food as well, while he just sits there seething. And this is honestly just worst case scenario. Imagine sitting down, all excited to watch your favourite show, you've got your snacks ready, only for it all to get spoiled just as you begin. Oh, that's savage. We then move on to Jen's house, where she has a brief talk to the camera scene, talking about how Wong's back, and thus the Twitter keyboard warriors are appeased for yet another week. And yeah, this gave me a good chuckle, because it's kind of true. But anyway, her dad stops by with a bunch of stuff to make her apartment more safe, like security cameras and whatnot, which she thinks that she doesn't really need, as she's a Hulk. She's unstoppable. Before she reveals that she didn't even bother reporting the incident, which, you know, I kind of think her dad's right to be upset here. She really should report it. After all, these people aren't just your average creepers. They clearly targeted her based on her powers, and clearly tried to take her blood with their little tool. Surely reporting it could help in an investigation. What if these guys were already known to the authorities or to other heroes? I know they were low-level thugs, but still, probably should be letting people know about this, right? Even if it's for other people's safety. We then cut to the workplace where Jen's creating a dating profile. Whilst on the clock. Woohoo! Before Wong appears to start ranting about how Donnie Blaze, a camotage washout who got kicked out after a week for throwing an impromptu kegger, is bastardizing the teachings of the mystic arts and endangering the world through his reckless use of magic. And thus, he wants to set a legal precedent in court that no unlicensed persons can practice the mystic arts. And all because he got spoiled for an episode of The Sopranos that he was watching. Never underestimate the determination of a salty man with a bone to pick. And obviously, it's a bit of a complicated case, and so Jen asks for his contact details, which he gives, before he storms out. We then cut to the bar, where Jen's just finished up with crafting Wong's cease and desist, before moving on to finishing up with Blonsky's parole brief. Whilst Nikki wants to take a closer look at her dating profile. A random creeper approaches and gets shot down instantly, and good, go home mate. I mean, seriously? Calling them sexy ladies to their face? Come on. <sighs> Anyway, they get rid of the trash and Nikki commandeers Jen's matcher profile, lamenting her choice of corporate headshot as her profile picture. And yeah, fair enough, that's a terrible profile. Before she just starts swiping. Nikki then recommends that she use her She-Hulk appearance as her matcher profile to get more matches, which feels a little bit harsh if you ask me, but okay. And thankfully, Jen starts to stand up for herself, saying that she's not going to use her She-Hulk persona to get dates. But of course, we'll see how long that lasts. The next day, she and Wong turn up to the Mystic Castle to serve their cease and desist to Donnie and his boss, or his assistant, Hype Man. 
All of the above, who knows. Before there's an impromptu magic trick showdown between Donnie and Wong, with Wong coming out on top in this exchange, because, you know, he actually has talent in that area. I very much enjoyed how shit all of Donnie's tricks were. The cease and desist when he tries to make it disappear, but it's still sticking out of his shirt. Hearing him click the lighter to make the fire come out from his phone. They're really leaning into having as many deeply delusional characters in this show as possible. And I'm finding it quite funny. The further we go, the less and less serious this show's starting to feel, and I think I quite like that. It's a change of pace from what we usually see, whereas the further you go along, it usually gets more serious. But anyway, speaking of delusional people, we then cut to Jen's latest date. Her date with an utter turd of a human being. That type of person that's just completely up their own ass. I mean, here, let me ramble on about my own life for the next hour and a half. God, I hate insert city name here. I much prefer this other place that I've hardly ever lived in before. I'm totally not pretentious. I don't have a job. I'm self-employed. I just haven't figured out how I'm self-employed just yet. You know what I mean? <sighs> But now let me order a ton of drinks and obviously check out other people whilst we're on our date and ignore you to go on my phone. And then leave you to cover the bill and call you a 6 out of 10 on the way out. Whew. Are people really like this? This makes me sad. We then move on to the court date. And it doesn't seem to be going all that well. And yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't. Somehow, I doubt they really have much legal precedent or legislation that really covers the ins and outs of the mystic arts and who's allowed to practice them. And so, running out of options, they're forced to summon Madison, who is somehow still drunk and partying, even though she lives in the same city as them, because she was at that magic show earlier. And it's the middle of the day as well. Jesus, is she just always drunk? And also, how is she even allowed to be a witness when she is clearly drunk? The legal system in this show, god damn it. Also, the actress for Madison is just very good at her role. She's one of the highlights of the episode. Equal parts annoying and funny. But anyway, to nobody's surprise, Jen and Wong begin to immediately regret bringing her in. And once again, to nobody's surprise, the judge says that her decision's going to take a few weeks and refuses to grant an injunction to stop Donnie from doing tricks in the meantime. And at the same time, also heavily implies that Wong's case has no real merit. Donnie then flips Wong the bird and just walks out. And honestly, yeah, that also made me laugh pretty hard. Also, rest in peace to anybody who hasn't watched The Sopranos and actually wants to watch it because Madison just goes on to drop yet another massive spoiler. Seriously. Workaholic Jen then goes home and forgets it's a Friday and that she has no plans. And so, having been cruelly reminded by her matcha app that she has no matches at all, she's forced to relent and use her She-Hulk persona to beef up the profile. And suddenly, she's super desirable. Although, I do find it hard to believe that she had zero matches on her normal profile, but okay. Anyway, we then have a montage of truly terrible dates where she encounters a muscle dude who tries to flex on her and compare his strength to hers. Cringe. Oh, and he yells at waiters as well, so double cringe. We then have a pretentious filmmaker try his hand, and then just a hero fanboy, so it's not going all that well, until she meets Mr. Handsome Pediatric Oncologist, who just likes listening to her speak about herself. And therefore, he earns himself a ticket to the bedroom. Woof. But whilst this is going on, Donnie Blaze decides that he wants to accidentally bring about the apocalypse with his magic show. As after getting heckled for using the same old portal trick, he decides that he's going to summon a bird using the spell that he saw Wong attempting earlier. And so, he does, and it lays an egg, which hatches into a demonic hellspawn. And so to solve this, he tries to open a portal to the creature's homeworld and pushes it through, and then savors the applause a little too long, and lets dozens and dozens more ooze in through the portal who start attacking everybody. Lovely. So our brave and resourceful wizard goes and finds Wong and begs for help. Who's back to binging shows? And who in turn is forced to call Jen as backup, both to defeat the threat, but also to get some legal evidence that this sort of unsupervised use of magic has dire consequences. Back at Jen's place, she and Dr. Stud seem to be having a good time, sitting quite intimately on the couch, flirting, telling anecdotes, him looking like he actually cares what she's saying. Ooh, oh no. She spilled the wine, better take off your shirt, mate. All that good stuff. Only to be immediately cock-blocked by Wong, who arrives via portal, to get her help defeating the gremlins. And they have a very fun and exciting battle scene, and there's really not much else to say other than it was fun to watch. And then she returns to her house to sleep with the hot guy, who immediately bails the next day when he sees what she looks like in real life. <laughs> Mega ouch. But also kind of fair. She did kind of deceive him, right? 
I feel like his reaction's probably fair enough. Also, she learns from the news that Titania's gotten off her charges completely, and that now she's suing her for misuse of trademark, claiming that she trademarked She-Hulk first. So, I guess that's what's going on next episode. And then the episode ends, with us getting a fun mid credit scene of Wong and Madison hanging out, watching TV, and just chatting about alcoholic drinks. This was a scene that nobody knew they needed until they saw it. But yeah, a fun episode, but holy shit, it felt very short. Like seriously, why are they skimping on the content here? Like, I'm enjoying the show, but I think I'd appreciate a lot more. This episode came to an end and was like, wait, what? That's the end? <sighs> but yeah, that is just the end of the episode, and thus it's the end of the video. And I would like to remind you that these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. So what did you think of the episode? Did you like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.